Everyone is wrong about Apple Vision Pro. Listen, Apple Vision Pro, it's available to order now, and like every Apple product launch in history, it has garnered criticism from almost every angle. The headset's too pricey, the battery life is too low, the design looks weird, and the headset's too heavy, right? Granted, a lot of these are valid concerns for a first-generation product, but the core of this argument also assumes another, and that is a comparison to products that have launched before the Apple Vision Pro. For example, one of the most common arguments I see against buying the Apple Vision Pro is, why would anyone spend $3,500 on the Vision Pro when you can buy the MetaQuest 3 for $500 and it does all the same things as the Apple Vision Pro? And I think, that is the wrong argument, because while you can certainly argue points like specs, price, and weight, what most people are arguing against right now is the experience being the same on Vision Pro compared to other previous VR or AR headsets that came before it. And to me, that is like comparing the first iPhone with a BlackBerry. Sure, both are smartphones and both share a similar form factor. They're designed to do the same things, but the iPhone experience was far different than the BlackBerry, far better than any other smartphone experience at the time it was released. It was a revolutionary new product and introduced new ways to interact with the device category that has been around for a really long time. Don't forget, cell phones up until that point were, yeah, th th you could get a cell phone in like the 70s. And, and Apple came in and they rethought how the cell phone worked, or I guess more aptly, if you want to be more precise, how the smartphone worked. The iPhone wasn't just another smartphone, and the Apple Vision Pro isn't just another VR headset. That's the number one thing I think people get wrong with the Vision Pro is just this. They assume the experience will be like the plethora of VR and AR headsets that have come before it, and to be fair to those people thinking that, Basically, all of these VR and AR headsets have been failures. They, and what I mean by that is they have not caught on with mass market adoption. Like even as successful as the MetaQuest 3 might be, most people don't own one. You, you know, you step into someone's house, chances are they don't own a VR headset. Now, I don't think the Apple Vision Pro is going to do this. Number one, it's $3,500. There's no way that is going to reach a mass market with this Gen 1 product. Uh, and even if it could, there aren't enough units available. Apparently Apple is only making around like 500,000 of them for the launch or maybe a million at most. So this is gonna take a while to catch on. But the, the thing that I think people are really kind of getting confused about is what the Apple Vision Pro is. Because if you aren't paying close enough attention to the marketing materials or how Apple is demoing this device, uh, you might think that it's doing the same exact thing as every other virtual reality headset that has come before it, just at a much more expensive price point. And granted, there are some experiences that are going to be pretty similar to what current VR headsets offer. I would say the thing that's probably gonna be the most similar right now is the consumption of media. So one thing that VR headsets do right now uh, that the Apple Vision Pro might probably do better based on its specs, but one thing that you can do right now is you can put on the VR headset and you can pretend you're in like a virtual movie theater with a giant movie blown up on the screen. Um, you know, experiences like that are probably gonna be similar. Uh, gaming is another point where um, you know, current VR headsets are heavily pitched as gaming devices, first and foremost, right? Like I think if you're going to buy a MetaQuest 3 or a Vive Index or PlayStation VR, right? You are buying that to play games on. And that might be almost the opposite approach to Apple Vision Pro. Sure, there are games launching on it, uh, but it doesn't seem to be the primary focus. I mean, this thing isn't even launching with controllers. And I, I think that's a big point of this whole uh, product category of what Apple's trying to do here because Almost every other VR headset that you go and buy nowadays, even if they have gesture controls, their main input method is usually just two controllers. And Apple is saying no to that. They have basically invented a whole new way to interact uh, with the headset that doesn't require controllers. It's very reminiscent to me of when smartphones were out and people were wondering, how are you gonna control this smartphone? How are you gonna do it, right? It's going to be a touchscreen device. It's not gonna have a keyboard. Uh, we're gonna use a stylus, Steve Jobs said, right? He was kind of joking. We're gonna use a stylus. So what are we gonna do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're gonna use a stylus. No. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them, yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. And there was a moment where you almost thought, oh, oh, that's what they're gonna use, a stylus. And then immediately he goes, no, we're not using a stylus. We're gonna use what everyone's born with. We're gonna use our 
fingers, right? You got 10 of them, you can use them on the smartphone, you can scroll, you can pinch to zoom. He's showing off all these gestures that you can just do with your fingers. And that's kind of like the same analogy here for Apple Vision Pro. You know, Tim Cook could have got on stage when he introduced it and, and went, what are we gonna use to control Apple Vision Pro? And he could have quickly said, controllers. He, and then he could have done it classic Steve Jobs style where he goes, no, 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 we're not using controllers. We're using what everyone has, their hands. There's no other additional input method that, that you have to grab, that you have to charge. You know, if you just want to use this device with the default settings, even though there are, you know, accessories like a keyboard or mouse that you can get for Vision Pro, you can just use your hands. And I think that was kind of the genius of this device when I was watching the unveiling of Apple Vision Pro is they kind of, you know, when you think about these hand gestures for something that you can't touch like a smartphone, it sounds like an impossible task. I mean, listen, smartphones, they're tactile devices. You pick them up, you hold them, you can feel the screen when you press it. So when you're thinking of like air gestures for like the Apple Vision Pro, this and this and moving, moving your hands around like this, you can imagine the fatigue, right? You're holding your hand up, you're selecting things. You do this for five minutes. It's kind of like Steve Jobs' argument against touchscreen Max, right? It feels like your hand's gonna fall off. But I think the main input method that Apple really nailed with Vision Pro is the way the system works to detect hand gestures and how you select inside of Apple Vision Pro. So you're not using controllers, you're not even pointing at things, which is the default thing you would assume, right? It is eye tracking. So let's say you want to select an app. You look at that app and then you pinch your fingers and you select it. Kind of similar to like a, ma like a virtual mouse click with your hand. And the, the best thing about Vision Pro is you would assume again, you hold out your hand, you pinch, the headset sees it. No, no, no. You, you just hold, you can hold it down like this and, and pinch. That's it. You don't have to hold your hand out like that. You can just hold it right down there. There's cameras pointing down that can detect these input methods. And, you know, I haven't used Apple Vision Pro, right? Like this is a new device, but based on hands-on experiences, these gestures work really well. And then, you know, you have other gestures to flick and scroll. You know, Apple thought of these gestures and it seems like if, based on first impressions, they nailed it. They have solved a way to use this device that feels natural, much like the first smartphone. They have devised a way to use this device that doesn't feel fatiguing. And, most importantly, they have devised a way to use this device, even though you can connect a keyboard and a mouse if you wanna go in and have more precise control, they have devised a way to control this completely without the use of controllers, right? And that's important. That's really important to the success of this product. So the other thing that I think people really get wrong with this product, and again, we kind of touched on this before, is that they focus the Apple Vision Pro or use cases for it on being an entertainment device, right? Um, everyone's saying, well, you know, I even see people who are buying the Apple Vision Pro and who are excited about it. And they're saying, I plan to use this to watch movies on and to play games with. And that's it, right? They're like, I'm gonna watch movies and play games on it, just like you can with every other VR headset. But the thing that I think really stands out with Apple Vision Pro is even though you can do those things and it's part of the experience, that's not the only experience. It is pitched as an entirely new computing experience. It's why Apple is using the term spatial computing rather than any of these AR or VR experiences because they want to get it into your head that this is a new computing experience, just like the Mac was a new computing experience. You know, the first graphical user interface was a new experience. Going on your smartphone was a new computing experience. It was a new way to control uh, and use a computer. So with Apple Vision Pro, that is kind of the primary method of this. Uh, it is a computer, first and foremost. It is pitched as being uh, a device for productivity and for creativity. And I think that's really important. Uh, when you look at previous you know, devices uh, before things like the Mac, um, they were really pitched as just kind of productivity devices for work and all this stuff. And it's when the Mac came along and it was like, you know what? There's another market segment here. Sure, it is for productivity. It's for word processing. It's for all these other things, right? But it's also a device for creativity. It's a device for photographers. It's a device for video editors. Um, you know, we don't wanna be working all day at our computer. You know, it's it, a device needs to fill all these roles. It needs to be for work. It needs to be for fun. It needs to be for entertainment. It needs to be a device that can do it all. And that's where I kind of see Apple Vision Pro. Um, you know, the interface for that is kind of like you have a bunch of virtual floating windows around that you can control and manipulate, almost like you ha have like these like multiple monitors like floating around you. 
And you'll notice in all these demos that Apple's showing off is they're showing real work being done. They're showing people doing something as simple as browsing Safari, but then they're showing word processing applications. Uh, they're showing you being able to video edit. And then they're also showing the creative uh, side of photography or uh, other like really like technical, like engineering stuff where like, you know, you like, you need a 3D model and you wanna view like this, uh, product sample and then you can make like a 3D file and you can actually view it and expand it, you know, and zoom it all out, all that stuff, right? So Apple, again, most people look at a VR headset and they go, well, this is a device for entertainment, but Apple, again, is pitching this as a computing platform. Entertainment's part of it and it's something, yeah, of course, you watch videos on your phone, right? Uh, but it's not all you do on your phone. You message people, you, you research stuff on the internet, you know, you browse Safari, um, you're playing games on it, you are sending emails, right? You can do a lot of things on your phone that aren't just entertainment, even though entertainment's a big part of it. And I feel like that's where people are really missing the point of Apple Vision Pro. They're just viewing it as an entertainment device when really, this is a whole new computing platform. The technology in this headset is pretty crazy. Uh, it's 4K per eye, which apparently is a high enough resolution where there's like no screen door effect. Like it, it's pretty close to, I guess, what Retina would be as you're viewing Apple Vision Pro. People say the device looks really sharp and clear. Um, it's using micro OLED displays. So these are really high quality displays right out of the gate, right? OLED, uh, you know, it's gonna have like really good black levels, uh, dynamic range, all that stuff. Uh, cameras and sensors everywhere. I, you know, I don't, I forgot how many cameras or sensors are in the device, but they basically got cameras that can record the front of you so you can see a pass through, you know, like an augmented reality. You can actually see things in the real world, not just in a virtual world. Then you can, you know, if you want to go into a virtual world, you could do that too, right? Uh, and I think most importantly is the processor, right? It has an M2 chip. And, you know, it's funny because now we're on the M3 chip. So even people are looking at this going, that's an old chip, right? But listen, M2 is very capable. Like, a lot of these other headsets are kind of using like mobile Snapdragon chips, which are kind of designed for phones. And you know, phone processors are really capable nowadays. But I think the thing that people are forgetting with Apple Vision Pro is you basically got, you know, the, the specs for this thing are out now, right? You can get up to one terabyte and every Apple Vision Pro comes with 16 gigabytes of memory. So when you think about it, this basically is a Mac strapped to your head. It has all the power of a Mac on your head. I don't know how you can't be impressed by that, right? Like basically, if the Mac can run an application, the Apple Vision Pro should be able to, especially with 16 gigabytes of memory. So this thing should be able to edit in Final Cut Pro, right? You should be able to edit a video on Apple Vision Pro. It should be able to have like a bunch of apps open at once with all that memory. Um, it, this is a very powerful device. And I think it's one of the unique advantages that Apple has here is that other chip makers haven't really caught up to the efficiency and power of what Apple can do with their M series chips. And this is gonna be a huge lead for Apple Vision Pro. Um, I think games are probably gonna look pretty good on this, like for like a VR headset if people develop for them. And just the, the, the smoothness of this user interface, I think is going to be really good uh, compared to a lot of the other VR headsets. You know, I've used MetaQuest 2 and I haven't used like the latest MetaQuest 3 yet. I should probably do that before Vision Pro comes out, but it always felt clunky and not that smooth. Like you launch apps, they, they never felt super responsive to me. And, you know, when I think about first generation Apple products, things they usually nail with maybe the exception of like the first Apple Watch is a smooth user interface. And with the power of the M2 chip, I have to imagine that Vision Pro is just gonna be a smooth experience. So yeah, they have insane screens, cameras and sensors everywhere, but I really think the secret and power of Apple Vision Pro is gonna be that M2 chip. This is gonna be a very capable device. And it's something you wear on your face, which is insane to me, uh, but yeah. Listen, as we talk about how amazing this device is and all the specs for it, and even though I'm really excited for this device, I think the one people are getting right is that this is probably still a product most people shouldn't buy. Unless you're crazy into tech like me, uh, and unless you're aware that this is a first generation product that's gonna probably have its fair share of issues, um, you know, you should wait for revisions of this. You should wait for this thing to get cheaper down the line. Uh, because this is just the start. Hopefully it's just the start. Um, because I, I just look back at every first generation Apple product. Uh, the first gen iPhone didn't have 3G. 
Uh, you, you couldn't even copy and paste on a first gen iPhone. Uh, the first gen iPad was, you know, it was good, but like it, it was lacking a lot of things. And when the iPad 2 came out, it, it was so much better than that first generation iPad. Like they dropped support for the first gen iPad so quick, right? Uh, the first Apple Watch, that thing was so, so slow. And even with just like the second and third iteration of that device, Apple really found the purpose of that product. They made it, number one, a lot faster. They let apps load on it, right? Like the first gen Apple Watch, the apps were streaming from the iPhone. Like it wasn't even running on device. And then eventually they found out that, yeah, it's, it's a fitness device for and for really quick interactions and for health. And that was kind of like the focus going forward. So it took them some time to find what the true purpose of the Apple Watch was, even going beyond the fact that the hardware for that first gen was really slow. So yeah, the Apple Vision Pro, when you look at it now as a first gen product, you know, the problems that are pretty self-apparent, right? It's a big device. It could be, it could be smaller. Like I think if for tech like this to succeed, uh, hopefully it becomes a lot slimmer and a lot less heavy too. Uh, battery life, right? Two hours of battery life, 2.5 hours battery life max if you're watching 2D video isn't, isn't the greatest. Um, you know, first gen iPhone battery life wasn't the greatest either. So hopefully uh, as battery technology improves, as the specs of Vision Pro improve, as they can make this thinner and lighter, maybe require less energy to run, we can increase the battery life on this product. And then just the price, right? They got to get this price point down. 3,500, you know, I think it's fair for the amount of technology that's in this device, but uh, that's not a mass market price. Apple's got to bring this thing down to around a thousand dollar price point if they want it to be as successful as the iPhone was. And then even if they just want to reach Mac levels of success, uh, which, which wouldn't be iPhone levels of success, but still a, a pretty successful product overall, uh, they would have to get this a lot closer to, you know, 1500 to $2,000 to even reach Mac levels of success, I think. So yeah, Apple has a lot of work here and a lot of refinement to do over the years. But the one thing I can say about Apple is that it's pretty rare for them to give up. Other companies might come out with a product. I think of something like the Samsung Gear VR. I feel like Samsung did VR very, very early on. Uh, way, way earlier than Apple, right? But they kind of gave up. They're like, they, they released all these headsets that you put your phone in and, and, and then it's like, okay, now what do you do with it? And they gave up, right? They gave up pretty quickly. Um, Google, notorious for giving up on a ton of products and services. Uh, you know, one year they're developing a tablet and then the next year they say they're done with tablets and then they come back and make another tablet and the same thing with these Chromebooks. They, they come out with a really high-end Chromebook and then the next year they don't do one, right? So they're pretty quick to give up too sometimes. But what I can say about Apple is if you look at their product history, they usually stick through with things. You know, the first gen iPhone wasn't perfect. The first gen iPad wasn't perfect. The first gen Apple Watch wasn't perfect. But over the years, they have iterated and iterated, improved, improved. And eventually you get products that all of a sudden start to feel perfect. Like I look at my iPhone 15 Pro Max and I go, what a great device. What a refined experience. I look at my Apple Watch Ultra 2 right now. What a refined and uh, really great experience so far and above uh, where it came from. So I think that's what's gonna happen with the Apple Vision Pro. I think this is just the start. I don't think this is gonna be a mass market product. And I think it's gonna take at least five years before this product gets off the ground, right? Like before we start seeing a real pickup in volume uh, for the Apple headset. But Apple's gotta start somewhere. They gotta start getting app developers on board. They gotta get people making apps for it. They gotta get people used to this idea of a headset that you wear. And I think that's their biggest challenge because this is something that most people don't do. Most people do not put on a headset every single day. And I think the biggest hurdle for Apple at this point is if you see someone out in the wild wearing an Apple Watch, like when I first got my first gen Apple Watch, people would see me wearing it and they would go, how do you like the Apple Watch? How are you enjoying that? And I would go, I love it. It's great. There's these problems. Maybe you should wait. Right. But I would say, you know, I would give a favorable impression of it. Same, you know, first iPhone, right? People walk out, they see the iPhone, they go, can I pick that up? Can I use it? And you show it to them. They're scrolling, they're pinching the zoom and they're like, wow, this is so cool. Uh, the biggest challenge for Apple is how do they demo this headset? Like you can do in-store demos and all that, but you're going to have to see people using this out in the wild, which maybe people won't be doing with Apple Vision Pro. I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll see if people are using this in Starbucks. Uh, and 
yeah, you have, you have to see people using this and you have to kind of get that word of mouth of this is such an amazing experience. And then you have to get people to kind of be able to try that experience. So I think that's kind of the biggest hurdle for Apple and probably, you know, the thing that could really derail this as a product. It's such an unknown, right? Will this thing actually be a success or will it be a flop? And we're in a big unknown right now, but at least just looking at it from a first gen product, I think there's something special here. But I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, this product's coming out on February 2nd. I got mine pre-ordered. I got the one terabyte version, so I'm excited to try it out. But let me know what you think. Do you think people are kind of missing the point here with Apple Vision Pro? Or do you agree with that? Do you think that this is just another VR headset? And I'm crazy here and I don't know what I'm talking about. And when I get this, I'm gonna be sorely disappointed. And if I am disappointed, I'm coming after you. Why did you have to ruin my expectations for this device? But, but seriously, if you like this video, if you like my argument, give me a like. If you wanna see more, if you wanna see my thoughts on Apple Vision Pro, maybe I'm wrong and I'll have to admit it. You can see me be wrong and be like, Greg was wrong, look at that. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Exciting times ahead. I'll catch you in the next one.